Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Here I show the example. So the same, the same sequence I give A A T C T A T A. This is second one A A G A T A. Right? If I want to align these two sequences without introducing any gaps, how many ways we can align? Three ways because I don't want to introduce any gaps. So first sequence I put here. Second sequence here I put the left side, right? At the left leftmost side, and here I put it in the middle, and here I put the right side. Now we see which method is the good, which alignment is the best. So we use some scores. For example, if you take match score one, or the if the sequence one and sequence two are same, if the residues are the same, then we give a match score one. We put the match score zero if they don't have any match. If there is any change, if the residues are the same, we give score one. If the residues are different, we give score zero. So, in this case if you take the first alignment, how many matches? 1, 2, 3, 4 matches. So, the score will be 4 because all the mismatch we put 0. So, 4 plus the 0 that is equal to 4. If you take the second example, what is the score? 1 because only 1 match and with the third alignment 3 right 1, 2, 3 match will be 3. Right, so, we have the identity matrix we use A T C G. So, if it is same we put 1 and if it is uh, different we put 0 right, that is fine. Now, if you introduce gap how, why do you introduce gaps? To better align. Better alignment right. So, if we are, there, is a, there is some changes right. So, we need the gaps. So, in this case if you do the gaps how many different ways you can align these two sequences. We are here the length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right. So, here we have length as 3, 6. So, how many different ways we can align these two sequences if we introduce gaps? So, there are various ways. So, there are 28 different ways you can align uh, these two different sequences. So, I show an example, okay, this is sequence 1, here sequence 2, this sequence 3. Here I put two gaps here, one gap is here, one gap is here. Here also the same, same here, right here you put the gap here, here you put the gap here, here these two gaps are similar together. So, here we have to give a penalty, the previous alignment we give the match score and we give the mismatch score. In this case here we have the gap, so we need to introduce gap penalty. So, here I put minus 1 if there is a dash either in the first sequence or in the second sequence. Then match score 1 the same as before, so if this is equal to sequence 1 equal to sequence 2. So, if there is a mismatch we can put the mismatch score. So, we can put the mismatch score if sequence 1 is not equal to sequence 2. If you do this, what is the score for the first alignment? So, this is 1, 2, 3, right? For the alignment, match score is 3. This is minus 1, this is minus 2, and others are 0, right? So, this will be 1. So, if we take this alignment. So, what is the matching score? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 2, minus 2 3. Okay, plus 0 this equal to 3. So, about this one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 minus 2 plus 0 this equal to 3, right. So, if we the earlier alignment we got the score here without gapping gap. So, we get the score of 4, 1, 3. Now, we aligned with the gaps. So, if we change the score we get uh, 1, 3, 3. Now, so now, next question is okay, if you have these gaps and if you have this mismatch whether we need to give same weight or different weight. Before that I give another example. So, here we have the protein sequence. So, here I give the DNA sequence and I give another protein sequence here. This is sequence A here sequence B. There are different ways we can 
align the two sequences. So, I find the first one, so I put some gaps in the sequence A and the sequence B. In the second alignment, there is no gap in the sequence A, but some gap in the sequence B, and the third one we introduce gaps. So, we take the one example. So, if you take the first alignment, so this is same, T and D are same, I and I are same, this T and T are same. So, here this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, right, and here this is a gap, so minus 1, this is a gap, minus 1, and here again a gap, this is minus 1. So, 4 minus 3 that is equal to plus 0 that is equal to 1. The second one, so we did not give gaps. So, in this case here this is 1, 2, 3, minus 1 this is equal to 2, right. So, if you compare the alignment between 1 and 2, what is the difference? Gaps, right. So, difference is gaps because of the gaps we give the penalty. So, this is why alignment 2 is better than alignment 1. So, we try to minimize the gaps and maximize the score. Right, this we can do in several different ways. So, now another issue is we introduce gaps. Right, if you see this uh, alignment, so we introduce gaps, but there is a difference between the diff introducing the gaps. If you see the first alignment, how many gaps we introduced? Two. Two are the same position or different positions? How many different two different times we introduce gaps? This one time we introduce here, second time we introduce here. Here we introduce one time here and second time here and third one we introduce gap together. So, if you look into this evolutionary rates or look into this the origin of different organisms right. So, getting continuous gap is more closer than introducing gaps at the different regions or the otherwise if you have insertions or deletions which happen at different places are less probable than having these insertion deletions at together some stretch together. So, if we want to take into this account, what you have to do? Yeah, we have to give some penalties for the origination gap and we have to give penalty for each gaps, right. So, we will do that. So, if we have two sequences, any arbitrary sequences, one is 12 residues and 9 residues. So, we have shortage of 3 residues. So, we have to introduce 3 gaps, either these 3 gaps can be together or we can separate the gaps here and there. So, if we have the homologous sequences and some residues are missing at the N terminal or the C terminal. In this case, we can keep these three residues, right, either insertion in one sequence or the deletion in other sequence, right, at one phase. So, in this case, we can cover other sequences. In this case, we give penalty based on the gaps where we introduce. So, I give an example, right. So, one is origination penalty. So, that depends upon the gaps we introduce here for each series of gaps where we introduce in a sequence we give a penalty that is called origination penalty and the second one is length penalty that is number of missing characters when the sequence 1 and the sequence 2 when you align each other how many places where it is not aligned how many places you have the gaps ok. So, now we gave the three sequence the same three sequences here we have the gaps at two different places and here also we have the gaps at two different places and here the gaps are at the same place. So, if you take the origination penalty of minus 2 because we are introducing right we do not want to introduce because nature does not want to select these insertion deletions. So, we give the penalty of minus 2 and length penalty of minus 1 and the match score of 1 and the mismatch score is 0. If you do this what is the score for the first alignment? What is the match score? 3. Three which my score is 0 anyway and what is how many origination penalty? 2, 2 into minus 2. 2 times right, when we originate here, when we originate 2 here right. So, plus 2 into minus 2 right and plus how many length penalty? 2. 2 times multiplied by? Minus. Minus 1. So, this we will get 3 minus 4 minus 2 right, minus 2. So, minus 6 3 minus 6 that is equal to minus 3, minus three. all right fine. So, now we take the second one. So, here what is the score? 5 plus minus 4 minus 2 right, fine. 
this equal to minus 1. If we take the last one, so here 5 minus 2 minus 2, correct? This equal to 1. So, if you compare these two alignments, here we introduce only once, here we introduce twice, right? As per the selection that by the nature, right? We can this will prefer this alignment than this one because we insert two times here. So, the here we have the better score than the other other ones. Here we use the very simple one putting the value of 1 and minus 1 uh, for the penalty right and minus 2 for the origination penalty and 0 for the mismatch. But is it reliable right. So, if you give just 1 and 0 is it fine for the alignment right so put because 1 and 0. So, but that we can change for example, if you in the case of nucleic, nucleic acids right say so the product of DNA. So, how many different bases? Four different bases. So, at the current C scenario, whatever the changes, we give the same score, but that is not reliable, right? Sometimes we change purine by purine, sometimes we change pyrimidine by pyrimidine, sometimes we change purine to pyrimidine and pyrimidine to purine. Likewise, in the amino acids, different types of changes. For example, if you replace alanine by valine. So, there is an effect because alanine is a hydrophobic amino acid, valine is hydrophobic. What is the difference between these two? Side chain. Side chain. This is bulkier than alanine. Alanine is only one stage group, valine is three. So, we have the bulkier group. But if you replace alanine by lysine, uh, this is positive charge. So, here this is hydrophobic. This will change the environment. So, it may not be good to have the same score if you replace alanine with valine or a lysine, right. So, we need to consider the effect of the mutations. So, in this case we have to give the scoring in a different way, right. How to do that? But the in the blast sometimes they use the same nucleotides have a score 5 and the difference have 4 or we can give the mild reward plus 1 or we can give the score of minus 1 in the case of transitions. What are transitions? What is called transition? Pure into purine like uh, A or G right or pyrimidine to pyrimidine okay, C or C right they change vice versa. Then there is another called transversions. So, that means purine by pyrimidine and the pyrimidine to purine. Why they give the penalty of minus 5 and minus 1? Transversions. Right because what is the definition for the purines? Right, what, but the pyrimidines they have how many rings? We have two rings, pyramid one ring. So, if here you are changing two rings to two rings or one ring to one ring, that is fine. This way they put the penalty of minus 1. And the other way, if you change the other way around, so one ring with the two rings or two rings to one rings, so it may create either the crowded situation or that is to totally free. This way they, they do not avoid the situation, so they put minus 5. Okay, now, these are matrices. So, here these are the four nucleotides, right, ATCG. So, earlier we used 1, 1, 1, 1. Now we change it, right? This is if it is score, match score, we put one, right? If it is purine to purine or pyrimidine to pyrimidine, we give minus one, right? If it is other way around, purine to pyrimidine or pyrimidine to purine, so we give minus five. If you make this score, what will happen in the alignment? Mostly those alignment will be preferred where purine to purine. Right? So either they try to match or if you want to mutate, they try to make the similar type of amino acid residue or nucleotides. They avoid the other way around because un, some instances we have to cannot avoid so in this case we use, but in this case we give a score this is minus 5. Okay, this is for the nucleotides. What will happen in the case of amino acids? How to deal with amino acids? So, uh, there will be 20 cross 20 matrix. Right? So, we have 20 different amino acid residues. So, 20 different amino acids are classified in two major groups. What two different major groups? Hydrophobic, hydrophobic and hydrophilic, and hydrophobic we have different groups like aliphatic or aromatic or uh, sulfur containing residues, right? In the aliphatic, in this uh, hydrophilic positive charge, negative charge, as well as the polar, right? So, now we can see the mutations whether these two amino acids, right, are both have the aromatic functional group. So, in this case, we can give a good positive score or we can give non-polar functional group with the charged group. This is the aromatic to aromatic, right? that is fine, aliphatic to aromatic is fine. 
So, with there is nonpolar group with the charged group, here we get penalty because they alter the situations, right? This alter the stability or alter the function, like I we discussed in the case of sickle cell anemia. So, what is the mutation? Valine glutamine glutamic acid 6 to valine, right? So, it causes the cause diseases, right? Sickle cell anemia. So, in this case, we need to give penalty so that we can align like this, okay? Then, what are different ways to have these matrices? So, we have 20 different amino acids, right? What are the possibilities of changing a specific amino acid to other amino acids, right? Either you can change the hydrophobicity, like just we discussed, or you can see the charge, or you can see the size. Small amino acid to small amino acid, here they do not care about the hydrophobicity, but they give the small residues, like serine to alanine, or glycine to serine, or they are the bulkier groups, lysine to phenylalanine. Right. So, they give the size, right? they can derive the matrices, right? they can allow. Then another option is the genetic code. So, how many nuclear substitutions are necessary to convert a codon to an amino acid? Right. So, how many nucleotides? Right. Totally 4 nucleotides, right? ATCG. Right. So, 4, but how many amino acids? 20. Right. So, in this case we discussed earlier about the genetic code. Some cases we have only one mutation, sometimes there are 2. Right. So, depending upon number of substitutions in the nucleotide that lead to the amino acid. So, we can accordingly you can change okay, single substitution they group together, two substitutions they group together right. Likewise, they can make the genetic code to see how you can reliably you can align the protein sequences. And the common method right, so you can align with the heterophobicity, you can align with the size, you can align with the charge, you can align with the, the number of changes in the codon. But the common method to derive the scoring matrices is mainly they check the substitution rates, the actual substitution rates. For example, I showed the my hemoglobin sequences, take the actual sequence and just the align and then see what is the actual rate, how many times alanine is mutated to valine, how many times alanine is mutated to aspartic acid. So, they take the real ones and from these real cases they derive the matrices. How many, what is the probability of a specific residue A to be mutated to the residues B, right. So, if it is high or low in the real cases, right, for take the different organisms. So, based on that, they derive the matrix, okay. This is called the uh, called the scoring matrices. Okay, how to do that? So, in the alignment, if the residues are aligned quite frequently, okay, they give the positive values, and the alignment, if they are not observed, in this case, we need to penalize. So, we give the less score. So, how to do this? From the alignment of different sequences of various uh, homologies, right? Homology means how far they are similar, right? That I will discuss in the later classes. So, they derive a matrix that is called the point accepted matrix, mutation matrix, right? This matrix is called the PAM matrix. What is the PAM matrix? So, you derive a, um, like a score on the basis of how frequent the mutation occurs. Occurs, right? So, this is PAM stands for point accepted. Point accepted mutation matrix, right. So, you can see you can derive the some power matrix, right, by the substitutions that occur in the alignments between similar sequences. So, if we have sequence 1, sequence 2, several pairs of sequences, right, some of them you can see 100 percent match, some of the 90 percent match, some of the 80 percent match, right. They use different types of sequences with the different matches, for example, 90 percent. So, we take the all the sequences which have the similarity of more than 90 percent. In this case, if you have 10 residues, 9 will match, 1 is different, right. If you have 100 residues, 90 will match. If you take the 100 residues, if it 90 percent sequence, uh, sequence identity, so 90 will match, right, 90 match and 10 mismatch and this take this 10 and see the rate, which residue in sequence 1 is mutated to which residue in 2, right. So, if you look at this very carefully, there are two sequences, right? Sequence 1, sequence 2, for example, A i t v. So, here A a t v, what is the uh, substitution? i to a. i to a. If I take this as sequence 1 and this as sequence 2, then what is the substitution? a to i. I. So, it is changed. So, when they derive the substitution matrix, say they do not care whether this is from one sequence or first to two or two to one. So, they treat this as similar. So, for the development of 
the prime matrix this way they get the diagonal matrix. So, we get one side will get the data, so second red is this mirror image of the other right that is a, get the diagonal matrix. So, they usually use the sequences with more than 85 percent sequence identity and this means if you have 200 residues how many residues that have minimum uh, minimum number of residues are aligned? 70. If you have 200 residues the 170 residues should, be al should have aligned right 200 residues right or more this is minimum. So, then they get the changes and see how far the changes happened right. So, then how to construct a matrix first you have to see the relative mutability that means for a specific amino acid is to A for example alanine how far this A is mutated to other residue what is the frequency of the residue A to be mutated to other residues or any of the other 19 residues. Then the second one we need to think about how far this alanine is mutated to in specific residue how many possible substitutions alanine can make 19 right. So, the 20 amino acid residues so if alanine is mutated there are 19 mutations there are 19 different possibilities. So, now the question is what is the possibility of mutating alanine to glycine or alanine to lysine right if you align the sequences right. So, get the 95 percent sequence identity so, we check the sequences and then see how far they are aligned. So, this is AIJ for example, if there is the ACM what is the meaning of ACM? C mutated to how many times right 16 is mutated to methionine right. So, methionine is replaced with 16 right so, how many times they have this mutation 16 to methionine right. Now, this is the specific mutations in the alignment that depends upon how many times this is in occurs in the sequence and also how many times this is is mutated to other residues right. So, we need to consider all these aspects to derive the prime matrix. So, for example, if you take the any sequence for example, if you take alanine to glycine what are the different aspects we need to consider to derive the prime matrix frequency of alanine right first we need a frequency of alanine and then mutation frequency of alanine. So, this is one and second one is how many times A is mutated. So, mutation frequency and then then how the specific pairs right for example, how many what are the preferred specific mutations for example, the mutations A to G right we need to consider all these aspects right to derive the prime matrix. So, now we normalize the frequency of occurrence of each amino acid and finally, take the log of the each values this will give you the prime matrix why do you take the log yeah because otherwise will get log numbers. So, in this case we can uh, explain right. So, in this case in the log scale so we can explain the probability of each amino acid residue to be replaced with the other residues in the evolutionary rates. So, we have different matrices for example, prime 1 so, this means one substitution per 100 residues right this is called the prime 1 matrix this is also called log odds matrix right because the entries are based on the log of the substitution probability. Then let us see how, how we derive the prime matrix I will show an example right and we will derive the matrix right for example, if we have the 10 sequences we align the different sequences right and then see what are the different mutations and how we account these mutations to construct the prime matrix. So, essentially if we are take PAM 1 right this is compare the sequence which are closely related that means, they take highly, highly homologous sequences and if we take the PAM 1000 this is mainly with the distant relationship. So, they use various levels of sequence homology to derive the matrix normal normally you can use PAM 250 this is the usual ones we use for any alignment right for the generally aligning two sequences ok. Now, we will see how we derive the prime matrix. So, what is essentially prime matrix what is the expansion for prime matrix point accepted mutation matrix right. So, now what is the how the matrix uh, looks like 20 by 20 matrix. So, all the 400 elements are different or, or any uh, anything similar symmetric, symmetric right because the diagonal, ma diagonal matrix right because of the reason I explained earlier. So, we can get symmetric matrix right. So, now we have uh, different sequences sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I give the different uh, sequences and from different one sequence other sequence you can see the mutation. So, from 1 to 2 
So, the position number 1 A is mutated to glycine right. For example, if you take this one here A C G C T A F K I right. This is 1, this go to 2, what is the mutation? A is mutated to G right. So, now here the, the sequence is G C G rest is the same right. C T A F K I. Then the third sequence we get one is right. So, here the mutation is I to L right. So, here this is the change. So, we get this sequence A C G C T A F K L. Now, the second one we, we make another changes A to G right. So, here make changes A to G right, we get the, this sequence G C G G C G C T G F K I right, you can see the change C to G this A to G right, fine A to G this is the A and here you change to G and here you can see the change the A to L this is the A here and here is the L. So, here A to L and then we go to the other different uh, uh, mutations. The third one so that is C to S right from here uh, C to S and the last one you can see G to A here G to A. So, you can construct a tree depending upon the substitutions in each sequence. So, I think I will discuss the development of the PAM matrix in next class. So, first we recap. So, what are the different aspects we discussed in today's class? Yeah, first alignment, what is an alignment? Comparison of two sequences. Comparison of two different sequences, right. So, when you compare two sequences, say sequence A and sequence B, what are the various ch different changes? Mutations. Mutations, Insertion. what is the mutation? Substitution. Is a substitution, right, change of uh, one nucleated one amino acid by the other one, right. So, what is insertion? One or two nucleotides. Yeah, one or more nucleotides or amino acids that are uh, inserted inside the sequence. What deletions? Yeah, amino acid residues or nucleotides are deleted from the first sequence, right. So, there are different ways. Then how, then how to align sequences? We discuss about different aspects. First one, we have two uh, sequences of different length, right. If we can align without any gaps, and second aspect, we introduced a gap, right, to different places, right. And the third one, we discussed the difference between the origination and the gap penalty, how many gaps and how many times we introduce gaps right based on that we aligned. Then we for the scoring we have there are various ways to score the first one is for the nucleotide. So, how to order different ways to score Transition. Tra tra transitions Transition. 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 or the transversions that right? as well as the mass score right. In the case of amino acids what are the different ways to score Matrices. based on heterophobicity, based on charge, size. based on size and based on the changes in the codons and the actual one we can check the evolutionary rates. If you align two sequences, what is the actual changes from one sequence to second sequence right. So, based on that we can derive a prime matrix. So, what are the various factors one has to consider for the development of prime matrix? Frequency of amino, frequency of amino acid, mutation frequency. frequency of mutation and, and the probability of specific mutations right and we need to have some normalization factors to finally take the log to get the log odd matrix right this is a prime matrix also called log odd matrix right then the for, for the specific example we will discuss next class thanks for the kind attention